2018, Kingston Planning Board, it's public hearing night. We have lots of things to do. We have some, we have some cleanup to do on uh, the warrant article public hearings, and then we've got three applications for public hearings, one of which is new, two of which are continued. And first order of business, so uh, we'll introduce the folks over here. Uh, to my far left, Dennis Quintals, our town engineer. Peter Coffin, board member. Lynn Merrill is our vice chair and board member. Richard Wilson is selections rep. Glenn Koppelman here. To my right, Chris Bashaw, board member. Peter Bakey, board member. Robin Duguay, board member. Glenn Greenwood is our town planner. And you'll notice that he has a laptop set up uh, and some, some folks zooming in. And uh, when we get to the hearing that they're there for, uh, we'll explain to you what's going on there. But that is for actually the last hearing, so. Okay, um, first order of business. Glenn, can you, yeah. Helen sent a very long email uh, explaining something that we worked on at our last meeting on January 4th with regard to the warrant article proposals. And I, I believe one of them we just need to uh, essentially ratify or correct that, that we that we already did it. And then is there one that we still need to do? Yeah. So here's the here's the story. Um, the, all of the postings were fine except for the paper posting. Um, that paper posting for the ADU one came out after we made that decision um, originally. And so there were really only formally four days between the time it came out in the paper and the time we held the public hearing. And so that didn't actually give the 10 day notification that's required. So that one we have to ratify again. The other one okay, really. But stop right there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just for you to be thinking about it. We have a different board composition yes. than we did that night. So yes. does that mean we do the whole thing all over again? I, I would say we have the board standing as it is now. And to be clearest, we should do it with the people we have convened tonight. So. Do it with the people from February. No. I'm sorry. To do it with the people we had on the February on the on the January meeting? I, it makes no sense to me to not allow the discussion tonight. Okay. People who are here tonight that may not have been here then to take part. Okay. Because you're in the end going to take a vote and it would be silly for them to act as if they're not here. Okay. And the second one? The second one we actually took care of because it had the proper notice, and that's the one I thought didn't have the proper notice. So the aquifer one, you really already did, so if you just reiterated what happened at the last hearing, you'd be set. Okay. So for purposes of the, uh, of the minutes and for the explanation, and I don't, I mean, I see we have folks in the audience, but I don't believe that there are folks here specifically for the warrant no, discussion. discussion. These folks are all here for um, applications. But the one on the Article 201, the Aquifer Protection Ordinance, uh, was merely to make the definition of structure be consistent with the definition of structure at the front end of our ordinance and the preamble. Correct. Just so that when we refer to structure, it's consistent throughout. So we don't need to vote that one. That's we don't. Just that, one, that one actually, when we voted before, um, we're clear. Now, you could vote on it again. We're, we're all here. Does anybody so wish to do that? Or are you good with the action we took? With the business, I'm good. All right, so we won't do that again. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience on that one? No, okay. So the one on the ADU, uh, the accessory dwelling unit, which is Article 206.3 in the zoning ordinance, the proposed 
change that we worked on uh, and which we voted last time, but apparently we will now do it again, is to clarify how we are, how we measure the square footage of the ADU. And the clarification is to add the wording um, after one third of the size of the gross living area, otherwise known as GLA, heated or air conditioned space, as defined in the town's tax card. That's the, and that's, that's the red language that's in the paper in front of you. So, the other option was, help me out, the, the, the effective, effective, it's called effective, effective square footage. Effective square footage. Okay. Uh, the tax cards use gross living area. Um, I believe that Glenn, when he does his calculations, had been using that, uh, the effective. I have been using the effective. You've been using the effective. Right. That's correct. Right. So this right. would direct me to use a different square footage from the tax card. Right. So for those of you who might have read the minutes from the last meeting, if you weren't here, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion about this. And uh, there was a vote. Uh, it was not a unanimous vote. It was a split vote. But the board at the time, on January 4, voted to move that change to the warrant uh, defining gross living area as the standard for making the measurement. So, if you'd like, we can have discussion again. Or, if you're comfortable with making a motion one way or the other, uh, right now the proposal is to, uh, is to add the wording that you've got in front of you in the red. So I have a question for uh, probably Lynn. You must, you must have, I mean, you statistically you've been doing this for a long time. So in your opinion, just because, no, I don't mean to say your opinion, your professional knowledge, what is the actual distant difference roughly on an average house between what you're taxed for and GLA? Let me just, ex I think, I think I, when I, a couple minutes ago when we talked about this, I don't think I really adequately explained. Almost every town and almost every tax card, with the exception of Avatar that Kingston uses, only has two things, total uh, space and gross living area. Correct. Total area, gross living area. They don't have this effective. The effective is a, is a formula, it's a, it's a taxation formula that's used by assessors. It, it really has nothing to do with one or the other. Um, if you go to other uh, assessing companies, they don't even have that published anywhere. It's just a formula that they use. Um, Avatar happens to publish that. But gross living area is the area of a house that legally with any multiple listing service anywhere in the country is what they use to define the square footage of a house. The, and the MLS sheet that you get, uh, that a buyer gets, has total area of the building and gross living area. Those are the two. You never see anything else but those two. So the difference said, again, what, I guess what I'm getting at, the difference from effective, effective to they, okay, if I open my tax guide, mm -hmm. I see where I live down in Kingston, period. Mm -hmm. And it tells me I have X amount of square footage in my house. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm 100 square feet, mm -hmm. and I come into town and say, I want to put an addition on it. You say, oh, you can do a third. So, all right, 333 square feet. Thank you very much. You, oh, no, 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 no. That's the GLA. You only can build 227 square feet. So. I just think it's going to start an issue with people saying, you, you know, I'm paying this for the town of Kingston. I understand what the GLA and all the figures you're using, but square footage of a house I pay taxes on, uh, is this much money? But so. that's not the square footage of that. You're, you're paying taxes on the gross living area. When an, when an appraiser comes in to appraise that house, an outside appraiser that's going to appraise it for your mortgage, they do not consider anything but GLA. In fact, if you have a finished basement, even if it's a walkout, it's not included in the GLA on an appraisal. 
So, so when the form that effective has absolutely nothing to do with the gross living area of a house or the area that's used to value a house. So what Kingston does and all, every other town is here's your value of your house with your gross living area. Oh, but yeah, you've got a deck, so we're going to add a little bit more money on for your deck. Just like if you look at your tax card, you see there's a shed or there's a barn, and they add a little bit more for that, or there's a fireplace and a little bit more of that. That's what they do for the, um, the deck or your porch or, you know, anything else you have for the house. So, so those things are really the same as an amenity that you're paying extra for, like a fireplace. And the issue came up about uh, if you're making an ADU and you put a porch on it, that's not going to get counted in your G GLA for that ADU. So you, if you take one third of the GLA for the main house and build your ADU for, to, to match that, the main house has a porch that's going to increase the effective living area, and the ADU has a porch that's going to increase you know, the effective living area. They'll both be discounted. So you're, you're talking apples and apples that way. And uh, the reason we decided on this was because, for two reasons. One, GLA is what Robert Stewart was using, has been using, so it's good the magic number of the town. No, yes, you no, said that. But no, 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 he was using effective. And what we did is we went through and used GLA to compare them, and it didn't make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. So Because it was given credits for decks and stuff. Like it'd say a deck is 10% or something. That's what I'm getting, what I'm getting is, person that's going to do the application, that's pretty simple math, we're going to figure it out, and I just think it's going to cause a lot of issues by changing that. I don't think For it will. For a very small amount that we're talking about. So I, I think it's so minor that it's not going to really matter. So are you going to be okay when that person comes in with a detached garage, puts a 600 square foot ADU on, and then they put a 1500 square foot deck on the outside of the building exactly. because it's no yep. longer kind yeah. of the effect of That's right. And that'll be okay. Or you turn around the other way and they've got a house with a 1500 square foot deck or 15,000 yeah. square foot deck. Yeah. You know, they could have used that for okay. their ADU. Or well, they add a lean to yeah. to the ADU, you know, lean to garage kind yeah. of thing. You know, that's not, not counted. Not okay. Didn't make a lot of difference either way when we played with two or three. We just randomly pulled some tax cards and tried it to see. I think basically we're trying to make it consistent with what other towns are doing and what's on your tax card for you know, there's a number there. For, for and that was my comment last time, because I don't really care how we do it, just so we do it the same on both of them. And Kingston should be the same as you know the next town, the next town, and the next town. Mm -hmm. And since most of the other towns, or any other town that doesn't use Avatar only has GLA, they don't have a factor. That nobody even that there's an effective thing anyway. If you use Liberty or uh, Vision or any of those appraisal cards, they don't have uh, effective uh, space on it. So, are there any more questions? And if not, um, we should take a motion uh, on this whether to move this wording to the warrant. I'll move that the 206.3 uh, be modified to show the um, words of the gross living area, also known as gross living area, and heated air conditioned space as defined on the town's tax cards and, uh, to the uh, existing article. One second. All right, motion by Peter Coffin, second by Lynn. Further discussion? To say I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote to move it to the warrant, even though I prefer using the effective, but uh, I'll, I'll vote to move to the warrant and let them vote on Okay. Any more questions or discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? So well, that's unanimous. Okay. So we've got, and we've got a full seven member board, so that's seven in favor, none opposed, and no abstentions. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, I'm going to put off correspondence uh, and minutes until the end of the meeting, since we have all of our applicants uh, here ready to go. 
And I'd like to call the first application, which is Berkshire Dominion, up to the table, please. You guys know the drill by now. So while you're getting settled, what's that one? Do you have uh, AV, audio, visual, or visuals? Yes. You have visuals, right? I do. Yeah. Oh, and I probably have plans here. Yes, you do. So Charlie, why don't you bring us up to date on where we are, and then I'll have Dennis and Glenn go through their comments. Sure. So it was uh, November was the last time that uh, we were before this board. Uh, Rob was here on behalf of uh, Berkshire Dominion and Saddle Up Saloon, and pretty much at this point, we had addressed all the site operation issues uh, with the business. Uh, we'd addressed pretty much all of the uh, improvements necessary uh, to support the business. It was just down to really just one last um, issue, and that was with uh, the drainage in the parking lot, the large parking lot on, on adjacent lot 40A. And as you recall, we had orig originally designed an infiltration pond there, and it was cumbersome, it was large, and also uh, expensive. So we kind of kicked around some other ideas, and we had come up with, instead of doing that, uh, doing infiltration trenches. Our first uh, design, uh, Dennis took a look at it, and the problem with that layout was that basically if you had a significant stormwater flow, it would overtop one end of that trench and create probably scouring and really wouldn't effectively do what it was designed to do. So I uh, had a chance to meet with Dennis, uh, kind of went over it a little bit, and what we did is basically ran uh, the same idea here with infiltration trenches at the edge of the parking lot, but instead of running them uh, down slope, we basically ran a series of two of them uh, parallel with the slope and made them a little bit wider because they weren't quite as long as the original design to make up for that volume area. Uh, supported it with a, a, a drainage calculation or a memo. And Dennis had a chance to look at that, and then, uh, from his last letter, he was pretty well satisfied that. We were able to accomplish what we needed to accomplish there. Uh, as you said, we pretty much had gone through everything else. We had uh, a couple of conditional use permits that were granted. Uh, those are still supported by this uh, revised drainage calculation, so we don't need to go back and revisit those. Uh, other than that, there really wasn't much else. So if you want to just kind of take a look at what Dennis and, and Glenn have on it. Okay. Uh, before, before I turn it over to Dennis and Glenn, let me just say that we have a comment sheet from the fire department on this one, 
and it says fire and life safety concerns for this property subject to third party review, SFC engineering. I think this is a comment they've had before, right. but uh, they reiterated it for us here. And um, uh, help, I'm sorry. Well, there are two from the fire department. One says no comment, and one says what I just read. And they're both dated for today. Well, okay. So, Glenn, uh, your comments are that you have no new comments. Yes, they have, over the series of their revisions, addressed all of my comments. Okay. Thank you. Dennis? Okay, so <clears throat> I took a look at the revised plans, uh, and these are uh, previous comments that I had, uh, the ones that were addressed, I, I, I left off, but the last ones that were on my comment sheet was uh, number one was the uh, long-term operation and maintenance procedure uh, document must be recorded in the registry of deeds. Number two was uh, article 907, uh, should a performance guarantee be provided for all the groundwork proposed? This is typical for site plan uh, approvals. Cost estimate should be provided by the applicant for review and approval. The date for completion of all proposed work should be established. Three, uh, Article 90411, an engineering bond is also required to cover the cost for site inspections during construction. Number four, uh, I did meet with Charlie and Bill Hall to discuss the stormwater drainage design. The revised plans continue to show a stone trench to receive initial surface runoff in order to capture most, if not all, of any contaminants that otherwise would enter the nearby surface water. I reviewed the hydro pad calculations and have no objections. This, the trench now uh, follows the contour lines, unlike the previous submitted plan, and fulfills the design intent. Therefore, I have no objection to this design. The comment is addressed. Number five, I do suggest a minor change to the trench detail on sheet four as the width of the trench has changed, which I see that you have changed that, I think, now. So that the comment goes away. So those are the comments that I had. Okay, thanks, Dennis. So your comment number five has been addressed? Uh, yes, that's okay. fine. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, with regard to the performance guarantee, uh, Charlie, have you drawn up anything with regard to that? No, I didn't. Uh, not until we kind of discussed what the extent of it, is, it needs to be. I'm sure it could be a condition of approval, as with most applications. Okay. Okay, discussion from the board? Questions? Comments? Oh, um, and just, just I, I saw a couple of folks walk in that uh, I don't know if they're here from one of the applications, but um, this is a public hearing, so at some point in the process, I'll be asking if there's any public question or comment, and you'll be invited to ask at that point. Okay, Peter? Um, I have brought this up every time because Conservation Commission made this comment, but that is, uh, uh, I assume this will be a condition of approval, but um, all state shore land permits, including that for the floating dock uh, and for the two fountains. Well, we took the floating dock out of, out of this application. Um, so, you may recall we added note number 20. It says, use of the floating dock by the service and or patrons shall require approval from the fire department, building department. Additionally, a permit is required by NHDES if uh, not proven to be an allowed existing use, or, so quote unquote grandfather, said use is to be offset with indoor bar seating. So if they want to use the floating dock, then they've got to pursue uh, whether or not it's a, it's a grandfathered use. If not, they'll have to get the, the, um, the permit for it, and they'll also have to get fire department and, and uh, building department review on that as well. So so right now, the floating dock is not part of the request? It isn't. It isn't, but if we approve this plan or something that says we have to come back here for approval for that, only to get approval from DDS. It shows the floating dock on the plan. Yeah. And there's also the uh, question that's in the uh, selection letter about permits um, that stop required and the question is whether any electrical permits were pulled for that, and 
because it's uh, marine interface connections for the, for the dock, so obviously you know, it's just connected by the wire. Um, and that got pulled away, just you know, drifted off in the storm. That my wire coming into the pond, so um, there's standard for um, short power connections for um, floating objects. Wouldn't they be handled by DES or the fire department? No, we didn't really discuss that. The building, uh, the the electrical permits are pulled by the building. Man, yeah. yeah. So there would be, need to be electrical permits for that dock, and also it needs to be built, so um, there should have been a building permit presumably for the dock. But, uh, um, and, but that's one of the conditions that I believe is because it's one of the other from the uh, collecting center. Clarifications are all uh, permits for all work. Um, I mean, it goes through the building department. And uh, that's, that's just one of them. All um, done. But we also, but we got some issues of conservation commission. Um, the, the fountains are required permits from the EF. So that would be a condition of proposal. You will have to produce the permits before this, before this, uh, before this plan is built for check. There's no fountain on the plan. No fountain on the plan, yeah. There's no fountain on the plan, but there's fountains in the water. And we discussed that. And they actually have a photograph on their website, on your Facebook page, of those fountains being used. King's Nether Equipment is a home permit? No, DES. Well, what are DES? Yeah, but, but all permits, I think we... It's, not, it's it. not on the plan. It's not, I mean, I, we have no obligation over that. That's DES. Okay. I don't know so, what we're talking about. So part of the Conservation Commission's issues were shoreland permits be pulled. And they haven't been, so... Um, I think that's DES. Yeah, the town has no requirements, but the town has no requirements for it. I don't understand what we're talking. You just the town has no requirements for a fountain permit. That's DES. It's not our boy. Again, but the permit. It's not our boy. We're the planning department. We're not the building department or anybody else. That's one of the things. Just like I said, the permits can be required. So. Um, brought that before. I didn't have an objection before getting the state permits. This one question about the fountains. The uh, conservation has raised the issue that the fountain is in there without permits from the state. I mean, we do require state uh, approvals for driveways. Well, could the conservation the department con contact the state and get this information? Yes. So then, then maybe the state would step down and say, listen, you need permits for these. Well, there are permits required for it. And part of our job is to make sure they get all their permits, state or anything. Yeah, like we require a state driveway permit. Right. Yeah, and that's exactly. part of the plan. These other projects we've had on 125, the state involved, so we still require that as part of our planning process. Simple so, so comment on the conditions to be to unplug the pump. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing so approvals. Well, any plan that we <coughs> approve usually has a statement and should have a statement that uh, uh, it would be conditioned upon any required permit, state, federal, town, whatever. Well, yeah, what, what, what about the fact that the floating dock still appears <coughs> on the plan? Well, it appears because it is an existing condition. Okay. We, so, so, so the structure is there. It correct. Exists. I mean, we want a plan that reflects what is there. So then it's, it's a question of the... Making sure that we understand in our approval it. that we're not approving that for public use. Right. No use. But well, that, and the question is specific to use, not existence, right? right. So right. it's just a note that it exists currently. Well, the argument of it being grandfathered would be an argument because they've done a lot of work to it, so it brought it under needing permits. Uh, I know one thing was to have the fire guy give us rating on it, which we've never gotten. Uh, there's, like say, construction, which we've never seen any of the engineering on. So, I mean, one of the conditions would be that it cannot be used until things are done, permits. And Right. All the things that they've said they do all along that they haven't done. 
Right, and that was one of the conversations we had uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, I thought we were all in agreement that we were going to have this note that basically says that it requires the state permit or review by state, which grandfathering or not, you'd have to get a permit if it isn't, and that it would require fire department and building department approval prior to use. Yes, uh, we do show it on the plan, it's an existing condition, but this plan isn't um, approving the use of it until those conditions are met. Chris, the note reflects that. Yeah, the, the note says the use of the floating dock, whether for service and or patrons, shall require approval from the fire department, building department. Additionally, a permit is required by NHDES if not proven to be an allowed existing use grandfather. So, like, that's what we're approving is that note. Right. I honestly thought at the last hearing we got down to everything but the drainage. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> but that was the only thing remaining that we had settled everything. Yeah. But those were open ended. The well, they were open ended that we were going to make a condition of the approval. Right, yeah, that's the wrong word. The other thing I'm going to bring up again on that is um, because the way the uh, selectmen have sent this to us, you can fill me in on this, but the intent of the application is to make amendments to approve site plan in an effort to bring it into compliance for the second letter that's uh, addressing of deficiency dated June 16th, as well as to clarify operation of the business as desired by the owner. So um, I brought up the issue of the, uh, the issue that we voted on before, which is the outdoor entertainment. And it was mentioned that, uh, I believe you mentioned that the, it's in the minutes. However, what we're approving is a plan. And since this has been a bone of contention for a long time, and we've had other issues that have come up that, um, where the, the plan is what goes to court. Uh, if we approve it, I think there should be a note. And I don't know why the applicant who's intending to follow this would object to a note in the plan that says that uh, outdoor entertainment <coughs> is not approved. Can, can, I'm sorry, and I'm obviously respectfully listening to everything that's on here. Last time we were here, as far as I knew, it was pretty clear we were coming back in order to resolve the issues of the drainage. And it's just difficult for me, to, and I'm listening, and it's hard for me to understand. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to listen down here. Uh, that's okay, but yeah, and I, I just, didn't we already, I just. Yeah. We're we, bringing up issues that we've already hashed out right. over the past right. six years, and we move the goalposts and bring up old stuff every time. Which is why. I think it should be on the plan because the select board had a hell of a time trying to enforce that provision. And, and, and they have that in their meetings and it's reflected in votes and all those other things. We don't require people to yeah. list out everything that's not specifically allowed on all their plans. I just don't think it's appropriate. Yeah, we talked about the dock. That was listed as, as a non use. We've talked about, uh, and again, it's on the plan as being not used. If you want it clear, it should be there because. So it says, uh, note number 18, site to remain in compliance with Town of Kingston no noise standards, see zoning ordinance 407. So I would think that sufficiently covers that. Well, it only applies, that was what they've been arguing before. They have to put that on with the outdoor entertainment. And, um, well, then I, then I say either make a motion to require it, but I'm not going to vote for it. And I, yeah, I, I need to be done talking about, about it. Anymore. You didn't vote for it. It's been six time. years. Okay. My understanding is that the outdoor entertainment was not going to be approved uh, as, as, any, as a general time on here. They could have outdoor entertainment anytime they wanted, you know, per this note on the plan. It was to be by permission of the selectmen only. So I don't want to say that you can't have outdoor entertainment here because you can, but it requires permission. I mean, Peter's yeah, just saying he thinks that needs to be stated on the plans. And I, I Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, but this goes to court. Minutes are included in yeah, and any um, decision made on the minutes. Well, I, I made a statement two months ago that on approvals like this, I'm going to prepare a written notice of decision that will reflect those salient issues from the minutes right. so that that's something that goes into every file. And so I, I have no problem with the fact that um, Peter is concerned. But I think that's something that should be in the notice of decision. Not, not, it's not necessarily a note on the plan. Okay. I'm, 
I found that the second one doesn't have to enforce this. So, um, because then they can go to our file, see our notice of decision. It's going to say outdoor entertainment is only permitted through a, a permitting process by the Board of Select. And in the future, if they wanted to come back and reapply under your planning board, they could do that. And that would be where it would get changed. Um, so, uh, so for that notice of decision, I will go back through the minutes and pick up those items that over the course of this very lengthy review, um, I, will, I will make those clear in that notice of decision. Okay. So then if I'm reading this correctly, the Dennis's assessment is that the drainage issues have been resolved. So we're looking at a performance bond and necessary state uh, approvals. State and local approvals for any, any, any other work. Any, any yeah. state, federal, or local approvals. Okay. And uh, the operation and maintenance procedure being recorded and the engineering bond. So just four conditions that I see. <coughs> okay. So, because that covers a number of the items on the list. Um, the state have asked us to clarify this. And these are all items on the list. So I want to include them to this. So if, if this permits would include building permits. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back. Okay. All right. Good. Before before the board gets into its final landing position here, seat backs up, seat belts <laughs> on. Uh, it's a public hearing, and folks have walked in. I don't know if you're here for this hearing or not, but if you are. And if you have a question or a comment to make, uh, now would be the time to do it. And if you raise your hand, I'll recognize you and you can come up to a mic. And, and there are folks sitting behind the, the, the panel, so I can't see you. Should I move that just off the side? You should. They, 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 they can make themselves known if they need to. Are you folks all set? All set. And the folks behind the curtain, yes. all set? Yes, they're shaking right here. OK. And you folks are here for something else. Okay, back to the board. We'll close the public comment part of it. Make a motion we approve the application of Berkshire Dominion Holdings with the following conditions. That the long-term operation and maintenance procedures document must be recorded with the Registry of Deeds. That a performance guarantee will be provided for all the groundwork proposed. That an engineering bond will be required to cover the cost of site inspections during construction, and that all required federal, state, or town permits are received prior to use of the property. Second. Do we have a motion? Um, okay, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. So we have a motion by Lynn, second by Chris. Further discussion. Peter. I just had a question that we need to include in the motion, the time frame for that. This is going to be my question. Okay, sorry. For time frame for meeting conditions? Yes, we should do that. All conditions. Isn't the usual 90 days? It's 90 days unless the applicant requests yeah. something different. Yeah. 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 This time of year, you got to ask for more. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm, because I'm trying to follow every piece of this, obviously. And I just heard you, you made a motion to approve, and one part of that was based upon uh, approvals prior to use, you said, could you repeat that part of it so I understand? Any required federal, state, or town permits are received prior to um, use. But this will be, you've got so many days, we're going to give you a use of, time. I guess use of what, not use of the restaurant, use. No. Use of anything no. that requires like the dog. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Got it, sorry, now I understand, okay. And we're going to put a time frame by which these conditions must be met. So obviously that time frame cannot be the usual 90 days because it's winter. So, so I was... So you have a time frame. All right, so time frame on the completion, what, what's the question? Time frame on the completion or on the... The, 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 the issue is that when we issue a, an approval, if there are conditions yeah. attached, it, 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 it those conditions have to be met within a certain period of time or the approval is null and void. So you want to give yourself enough time to meet the conditions. You also also have the option of coming back for an extension prior to that expiring if you need to. 
And do me a favor, just, okay, so the conditions, one more time, so I know. The conditions are that the long-term operation and maintenance procedures document has to be recorded. It's easy. Okay. That a performance guarantee for all the groundwork proposed will be provided for all the groundwork that's proposed. So, okay, so we need a, a performance guarantee in place. Which Charlie's going to draft okay. for Dennis's review. Now, would that include just drainage? Because I know we, we also do <coughs> some fencing, signage, and a couple other things like that. Is it all the site improvements? Signage would be under permit. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically the trench. Drain the trench and the drainage. Yeah. Just basically drainage. Yeah. Okay, so okay. condition two, and condition three. Down by the southerly side? Yes. Yeah, there's a drainage run down there. Yeah. Okay. And then an engineering bond be required to cover the cost of the site inspections during construction. And then the last was the all the federal, state, and local permits. Well, the, the drainage yes. would have to be done. Yeah. Well, and uh, one, to right. one other concern is when would the work be done, like the trenches and the drainage work? Is there a limit of, of, of when that can be done? Because it's been proposed for a long time on some of the stuff, and work on. So is there a time frame that the board would be well, concerned about what we're doing right now? That is getting done? That's, that's what we're doing. That's, that's what's happening that's right, right now. Right now. That's one of the no, no, I, I don't think that's what you're saying. What you're saying is meeting the conditions. But you're not saying about uh, the work itself. Well, the, work work get get done. Done. Yeah. the work could get done five years from now. No, I, I understood that because we talked about that last time. So there were two things. I'm trying to answer the questions. The conditions and obviously I understand that, but obviously there's the, ne the next question is, when is it going to be done? So the conditions don't seem burdensome to, to complete within the 90 days, the conditions mentioned, because that's just... But the drainage work... Correct. Right. So that's a separate question, I think, right? Usually what happens is that all the work gets done, all the groundwork gets done, and then you get your building permit and you build. Right. This is an existing operation that's up and running, and the work is being proposed, but who knows when it's going to get done? So, so, would, so would it be appropriate to put a condition of completion of the trench work and the drainage, and if we put all the conditions up to 180 days, is that something you guys are going to be able to meet? And the only issue I have with that is you've got some simple things that should be done immediately, like the illegal signs and you know, either permits or take them down or clean over them. Those are still enforceable if they're not You know, don't, don't leave the things that people have been complaining about for years there when you can Right, very easily. Charlie, Charlie knows about right. mm -hmm. things yeah. So I'll amend my motion to add a fifth condition that the first three conditions be satisfied within 90 days. And then the last two conditions, uh, the conditions for the permits <coughs> and the condition that the trench work be completed in 180 days. The difference between this and the other ones that normally come before us is that uh, you can't start your operation until this, the conditions have been met. You're here, you're already operating. So um, one of them, but you're operating on a 2015 site plan because uh, it hasn't been amended. So um, one of the things in that is in, in this plan that's not in the 2015 site plan is outdoor dining. And we'd like to see you do that. But that's got to be the kind of the character. If you, if you get stuff done by the springtime, you can go into outside, outside dining. But if you're still on the 2015 plan, you won't be able to do that. I understand. Oh. Glenn? Yes, sir. The way that motion has been proposed, is that, uh, does that cover it from your perspective? It does. So. Further discussion then on the motion as amended. Applicant is clear. Charlie, you're clear. Yes. Call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And any questions, uh, you can you can see Glenn Greenwood. Glenn Greenwood will be here. Charlie?
Len would be your contact if you have questions. Sure. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll miss these <laughs> endless <laughs> countless meetings. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Charlie, you're with us for the whole evening, is that right? Well, one more, you know. Oh. Know, so I don't know if I'll do any. Okay. <laughs> so, the next application is for TTAD LLC, Granite Fields Commercial Condominium, Diamond Oaks Boulevard, Tax Map R3, Lot 4, Land Unit 1. The applicant is seeking approval to allow for construction of a two story, 40 by 100 foot, in other words, 4,000 square feet metal on slab commercial buildings. I believe that number has changed. Yes. So, but this is, we, we carry forth the original posting, so. That's fine. Well, the first, yeah, one building, uh, building A is 4,000 and the other one's 3,600 now. So, two two-story buildings, but the sizes are different than what's yeah. So, um, and this is a continuation. Uh, we, we, we've been here before for this one, so uh, Charlie, why don't you start by bringing us up to date? Okay, so we were here uh, last month on uh, the December 14th meeting day. Uh, does anybody need plans, by the way? I have, uh, again, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 11 by 17s. I've got a few here, I think, Charlie. Okay. Is well, there a smaller one? Yes. So, Peter? So the tape has been flipped over to the other side and just for the purpose of uh, Ellen, who's going to be transcribing these minutes, uh, that last hearing ended at uh, well, roughly 7.16 and we're starting this one at 7.20 p.m. Okay. All right. So as you recall, this is a continuation from last month, December 14th. We made, uh, in my opinion, significant progress with it. Uh, at that meeting, uh, the board voted uh, in favor of the waiver request for the shared parking. So we got that accomplished. It also granted the two conditional use permits, the one for the use within the aquifer, and of course the other one for uh, the use within the woodland buffer. So those were the, the two conditional use permits and the one waiver that we had requested, and those were all granted and now noted on the plan set. Uh, also, the conditional use permit for the aquifer, that was conditioned uh, with additional notes being added to the uh, documents, the condo documents, as well as to the plan set. That, um, note the additional restrictions within the aquifer district. We did that, we added that to the plan to meet that condition. Uh, there was also uh, a condition on the buffer uh, conditional use permit where you would ask that we removed the snow storage that was shown within the, the buffer area. We've done that and revised the plan accordingly. Uh, we met with the fire chief uh, shortly thereafter that meeting, and he had requested that we add um, notes regarding uh, alarms that he wants uh, added to building fire, fire alarms, as well as he wants a uh, knock box access to the building. So we added that, um, and that should satisfy his review of it. Uh, also, there was a, a few odds and ends uh, the board asked for. You were asking for some additional signage to be put up on the building, uh, some to note where the assigned parking was, and on the other side of the building, on the lower side, you wanted to see more no parking signs. We added those. Uh, we also added the proposed safety fence around the um, wet pond as requested, and then just a couple of the smaller items. Uh, 
Dennis, I think, had a chance to look at the revised wet pond calculations. I think we're in pretty good shape with that. Um, all the site uh, drainage seems to be in pretty good order here. Uh, the only thing I don't uh, know about is we were asked uh, to get the information over for town council review of the, the uh, condo docu documents in the plan. Um, I don't know if we've gotten anything back from, from Mr. Kalman at this point, but it did go to him for his review. So did, did other they, than that, uh, I think we've addressed pretty much all the concerns and all the, uh, the comments from uh, this board as well as the uh, consultants. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Glenn, do you have any update on, on the... Yes, and Charlie did um, add all the things that we asked him to add into the condo documents, and the board actually did get a red line version showing those additions added to the, uh, the condo documents. I talked with Sumner today, we don't have anything in writing, so um, we will get something in writing. So if you want to make that a condition of approval, um, that would be that would be fine, but it, it is forthcoming. But we do not have it yet. Okay. But in saying that, they, they did add all the things that we asked them to add to those, those proposed condo documents. Well, while you have the mic, Glenn, do you want to go through your comments? Yes, I am. As you see, I, maybe there's a point where I don't include all my arguments when I'm just scratching them through. I, I don't think I've figured out what that point is. Everything has been removed except two things, the condo documents and the discussion on um, a, a threshold for substantial improvement, which usually we only worry about with roads with proposals that have roads, um, because the, the point of that substantial improvement is it's twofold. It's to make sure that there isn't any liability for the town if somebody walks away from a project and we're stuck with having to complete a roadway for safety measures or something. We don't want that to be the case. In, in this instance, the only function it would, it would serve is if they didn't do this development, and in the ensuing 24 months, two years, um, they didn't complete substantial improvement, invest themselves. If we changed our zoning ordinance, it could impact their plan. Right. So I, I guess if, if we wanted to be concerned about that aspect, then we should say that substantial completion is the completion the construction of at least one of the two structures. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say completion of the project as submitted. Well, I mean, I think I, we want to give them some leeway over the next two years, um, but there is if if one building of, isn't potentially the greatest right now, right? Um, unless you're, you know, well off financially and you're you're doing this all by yourself, then you can build whatever you want. So there could be constraints to them. I, I don't know, so I think we, we can't disregard it as I usually would with just a site plan. I, I don't think we should really do that, but I think it could be it could be both buildings or it could be one of the buildings. I guess, I, I mean, personally, I guess I'd be fine with one building, but I would also want to make sure that, that, the, that the, the, the groundwork yeah. and things, things protecting the, the wetlands and the, you know, the, the, the stormwater management all that stuff is yeah I think it's hard for them to even construct one building without making sure that their stormwater management is taken care of well that may be true but should be I, I personally would like it specified that's fine and I'm fine with one personally I'm fine with one building but we'll see what the board thinks perfect Th those are my remaining issues on this project thanks Glenn yeah, that's the only thing the town would have to take over would be if they still wasn't stabilized and run off. Correct. Of Quite frankly, the way it is right now, the runoff going in down to the Little River is uh, is not a good situation. So, if they got berms up and, and the slope stabilized and everything else, uh, that would at least relieve the town of having to come in and do that. Um, and as you say, for the purposes of uh, not having us change the uh, zoning ordinances on them, getting built one building up would be I think, reasonable. Dennis? Uh, yeah, the only thing left on my comment sheet was uh, 90412 was about the 
performance bonds uh, being established uh, and according to the 907, uh, 907 383 states that the amount of performance guarantee shall be set prior to final or conditional approval of the plan. I recommend a detailed proposed bond amount be submitted so it can be reviewed prior to any formal form of approval not yet received. Uh, that's what the regulation, uh, that's what the regulation says, but uh, again, we talked about that being a commercial, uh, being a condition of approval in the last one, so I suppose you can still look at this one too. Would, would you also include, as you did in the other one, the, uh, uh, the bond for, for inspections? Uh, you could do that. Um, part of the spreadsheet that we've used in the past as uh, a line item for percentage for engineering costs. So it could be included in, in, in that too, but that, that generally is something I work out with, with Charlie okay. that, uh, in that case. Uh, so both items are pertinent, whether they're yeah, yeah. rolled into one or separated into two different things. It's okay. Is that okay with you, Glenn? Yes. As far as something like that working out? Okay. Uh, we have one comment from the fire department that says, no comment. That was the extent of comments received from departments. Uh, I'm gonna take public comment now before I forget. Uh, I don't wanna get too far down the pike here. So the board can be thinking about how you wanna proceed from here. But uh, since this is a public hearing, if you have questions or comments, now is your opportunity. And if you do, just raise your hand. I'll recognize you. And you can. I keep looking over here, and I'm just. They're all here for the next one. Oh, <laughs> all of them except for Jim. People on the <laughs> and the people on the screen. Everybody's there for that. Got it. All right. Let the record reflect then that uh, there was no public comment. We'll close the public comment part of the meeting and bring it back to the board. Questions from the board? Yeah, I just have a question for Glenn. So the condo docs have been amended to include language that um, board approval would be required for any proposed amendments, but Correct. we just don't have anything so back from the Correct. We, we, don't, we don't have to sign off letter, but everything has been prepared and added into the condo docs. Okay. So that should be pretty easy. They're working diligently over there. I make a motion that we approve the application from TTAC LLC with the following conditions that final approval be received from uh, the Town of Kingston Council uh, and, uh, the con uh, for the condominium documents. That the threshold for substantial improvement will be one building and all the sidewalk. And that a performance bond will be established in accordance to Article 907.3.a.3 prior to uh, final approval. Is there an engineering bond as well that they have to win? The second work is going to be inspected during the process. I think that, like I said, uh, on the spreadsheet that we've been using, you can do it separately, but on the spreadsheet that we've been using, uh, there is a line item there for a percentage of the total amount. I think it's like three or four percent. So that would cover whatever's in that bond when you're building on the building. I think that that's what, what we've done in the past. That's why I asked Glenn if it was okay with him. So, you know, so we did it a little differently the last time on the previous one. We, we probably could have rolled it in as well, but okay. Second. Motion by Lynn, second by Robin. She's quick on the draw. Yeah. <laughs> no, I missed the last one. And, and did, I miss the other days? did I miss the contract? Oh, we have uh, time for meeting. Um, 
No, you didn't miss it. <laughs> he mentioned it to I, answer your question. I, I, was, I was taking notes and I thought maybe I just didn't hear it. Three days enough time? Yeah, that's fine. I would think so. How many days? 60. 60? For, are you yeah. talking about for conditions, no. getting the farm, the docks, getting the Oh, but not yeah. for, was there a time frame for the um, construction? No, that was a substantial. No. He's yeah. 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 got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They're motivated. <laughs> We're good. Um, and all conditions be met within 60 days. We can't control the lightning. And Charlie, if that doesn't work out, you all obviously know that you can ask for an extension. Just just don't let it expire. Right. <laughs> and it can't be done much quicker. Uh, further discussion? So the legal notice reads that the applicant is requesting approval to operate an overhead garage door business and self-storage units. Now, the, Very sorry. The, um, <clears throat> the preamble that I need to do here is that the applicants are actually in another part of the country and they're with us on the computer right here. That's who you're, you're seeing. I'm assuming that that's Matthew. Yeah. Is it? Who's with him? Allison. Alice. Alice. Allison. 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 Oh, oh, you, we can hear you. Excellent. Yeah. Can you angle? Can someone angle us down a little bit? Because I can see the top of your hair. Well, oh, just so the camera can see you. Okay, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. I mean, it looks great. That's oh, good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> there you go. Is that good? Yep. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So. The, what I what I need to make sure that uh, that we cover here is the fact that uh, because the applicants are not able to be with us tonight, they've authorized, I believe, family members, yeah. and we'll we'll get their names in a minute to represent them, and we have authorization for that, Glenn. Well, actually, we do not, so we would need them to. All right. Okay. Stay. Okay. So, but before, okay. So before I get to that. Um, I need to make sure that the, because this was not advertised as a remote meeting, I need to make sure that the board is comfortable with these folks allowing those folks to, at the table to represent them here and they, they can do that verbally. Uh, but I also need to make sure that you're comfortable with participation in this meeting by someone who's coming in remotely. Yeah, I'm fine because if it hadn't been having a representative, we would, oh, you always have allowed uh, applicants to have a representative. Um, oh, but so that's not the that, 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 that's not the key thing. That is not the issue. The issue is if they want to participate in the oh, meeting, I see what you mean. Yeah. is that okay in, in the sense that they're coming in remotely? I think we should do more of it. Yes. Let this be president. The governor's order allows it. If the governor's order allows it for and, meetings. 
And if there's any question of clarity, it can be this, what she says or he says can be repeated by the applicable yeah, chamber. If you're talking about the emergency order, that no longer exists. Uh, the governor's order about Zoom that still exists. Yeah. That the majority of the meeting has to be in a room. It's the, it's Anybody the, else can Zoom in. Have to have the, that's oh, the, uh, yes, forum. there has to be a physical place for the meeting. There has right. to be a forum at that physical location, which we cover. Mm -hmm. um, what we didn't do in this case, and that's my only question to you, is that we did not advertise this as also having a remote option so that people could zoom in. We're allowing the applicant to do it as long as you're okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I think the only thing I'm okay might... because there's a designee here. Which I feel like meets the right. intent of. You okay, Richard? Oh, I think the only thing we're missing, I don't know if we got Matthew and Allison's last name for the record. Oh, uh, Francis. Okay. And Alice, Allison's last Allison name? Allison Milioto. M I L I O T O. M I L L I O T O? One L. One L. I L I O T O. I O T O. Milioto. Milioto. Okay, and Matthew Francis. Right. All right, and could you state for the record who you have authorized to represent you here at the meeting? Yes, so my father, Paul Francis, and uh, friend and realtor, Ben McCurry. Paul Francis and, I'm sorry, I missed the other. Ben McCurry. Ben McCurry. M-E-R-C-U-R-I. All right, excellent. So the board's all comfortable with this. We're all good. <clears throat> all right. So what, uh, sir? Since you're making this sort of a Zoom meeting. No, we're not. <laughs> uh, well, one of the abutters is away at work. He's working, not in town, he's away. So if you're allowing them to do it by Zoom, why can't white signs be on Zoom to see if he's an abutter? Okay, well this was my concern, and which is why I wanted Glenn to uh, advise me before we even got to the meeting, which is why I went through this whole process. And so, uh, Glenn, I want you to address that question. I mean, are you saying that he, he would like to zoom in now? Well, again, I don't know if he would, but I'm just saying in the effort to be open and fair, if we're allowing the owners to zoom in, wasn't made in advance, we could have let one of the abutters white signs know he can zoom in and be part of the meeting. Since he doesn't know that, he's not prepared to do that. I think the only difference is that in this case, if they were not here at all, they have a legal representative here, and they have that legal representative here to speak for right. them. I think that's the difference. Um, if we had known that this was going to happen, obviously we would have advertised it. Well, if they are their legal representatives, then they should be in the meeting. If they have the surrogates, given the legal authority, then they have no need to be by Zoom. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, we will be subject to this call. The only reason that they're here is if there is a question that they would answer more clearly than their representative, they want to have that opportunity to do that. All right. Stand that or Mr. Science opportunity to address the meeting. He could have a representative here too. He, he could, and he, he had no one ahead of time. Well, the, the abutter notice, the, the notification says you can come in person, you can submit written findings, or you could have someone come in your place. All right. So he had that ability as well. Well, like I'm saying, if he'd known that we were going to do his own thing, he probably could have done that That's all I'm bringing up in the, in the effort to be fair to all the parties involved. I just want to know that to be on the record. That's understood. And if you could state your name for the record. I'm Garrison Todd, 17 Main Street. I'm the buyer. Okay, thank you. Adam? I'm not taking this off. I'm just, I know this has come up in the past, and this is something that if we are allowing one person to participate by a Zoom, we do have to allow anyone to participate by a Zoom. That, that is one of the legal requirements. I'm just, I know about that from another source. I just wanted to let that be known. My question is Francis' question of but what if an abutter had come in and said I want to zoom in, would we have allowed it? Yes. Yeah. And perhaps it may be procedural and 
if instead of having them having them face us and answer questions directly, if if they put the computer in front of their surrogates and if there was a question that came up, as Glenn points out, if they wanted clarification, if you wanted to get some answer, uh, you could ask them. It'd be like having a phone call. In there, but, I um, guess I, I guess I. Suggestion: I, if I had a question, I could call them on the phone. You can close that computer, and we continue with this. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I agree with Lynn. I would like to see this stuff happen more often, but because we didn't publicly notice it and make it available for anyone that wanted to use that platform, it, it's it's become an issue. Yeah. And as you say, puts us in a position of being challenged. All right. So, what I'm hearing from the board then is that. You're okay with continuing this hearing as long as we're not using the uh, the, the remote participation. Correct. As long as the applicant is. As long okay. as the applicant is okay with it, and if you're not okay with it, we could continue this to to the to the next uh, to the next public hearing. Your choice. So we don't really have a choice but to be okay with it because of the timing of the property purchase and opening a business. Um, but because they got to speak and just say something to the book to the board, could we just say something before we disconnect? Nothing, no. that can, nothing that we can take into consideration at this point. No, I'm just I just want to make sure that we're transparent with everyone in the room, including our abutters. It was not really our choice to be gone at this time, and we thought we did everything in our power to make sure that we were prepared for this meeting and extra communicative. So. We intended on being present for this meeting, and this is a very important matter to us. So I understand your decision to disconnect the call, but I want to make sure everyone in the room, specifically our abutters, understand that this does mean a lot to us, and we put a lot of effort, money, and time into making sure that this all goes through. That's all right. it. All right, Allison, thank you. For Before we disconnect, I just want to check. Uh, is this being broadcast on YouTube? Yes. So that, um, you could... <coughs> You can watch the proceedings on YouTube. On where? Uh, YouTube. If, if, you, if you do a search for Kingston, New Hampshire, YouTube, uh, you'll get the channel, and this meeting is being broadcast. Is that right, Adam? Yes. So you can find it there. And um, uh, Mr. Francis, your, your dad can reach out to you uh, during the course of the meeting if, uh, if something comes up that needs to be addressed, and he can talk to you that way. All right, thank you. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, Glenn, could you yeah. please? Now they just signed up. Well, just close it. That will sign it off. There we go. Just so you know, I'm as his father, but I've been in with his involved in his business from the very beginning, so I do know of, I should be able to answer almost all of your questions. Okay. So. Uh, I read the legal notice. Uh, we've gone through my, uh, my little preamble part, and we've come to a conclusion on that. Do we have plans? Uh, I don't have plans. There uh, should oh, be plans. Wait a minute. There, there should be plans in the file. Yeah. There should be plans in the file. There is the yellow file up there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Allison said she made 14 copies. For there. Yeah. There yeah, <laughs> should be three or four. Yeah. We definitely got the copies here. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah.
sort of walk it. what we start with is the applicant uh, giving a presentation so if you can walk us through what it is that um, uh, that uh, that the property owners are looking to do okay well Matthew um, the business is Aloha Red Doors he sells installs and services garage doors overhead doors dock plates that kind of stuff he's been in business since 2008 um, We've got, he's got three employees, four vehicles, whatever. But what we're trying to do here is his business has grown so much. Um, he has a huge garage on property at his home that is wall to wall stock. And this building will help him, um, you know, be able to service and, and do the things with his business and and expand into this area because right now um, he lives in Derry, the office is in Hudson, and <coughs> coming over this way again it was an available building. Um, what the what's <coughs> going on here is he wants to make some changes to the existing plan, looking for your approval. Um, the first thing is. He wants to have the hours change from 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, this will, one, because of, I, I think as his, for his business, um, he starts his crew, his men, at 7 a.m. and they get home whenever they get home, depending on the work of the day. And he's, he's been known to go into southern Maine with work. So the time there, uh, the expansion of that time from what was existing on the plan is what he needs to do. Um, second thing, if you're looking at the plot plan, he wants to put an electronic, uh, an automatic gate on the front of the property. Right now it's manual. He wants to make it automatic so his guys can come and go, and this also goes to the future of where he wants to create storage units out of that big long shed that's on the property. Right now I think uh, the police department uses two of them and from what I understand the other day when the gentleman pulled that old trailer off the property um, I've been told that the police department uses that shed to keep the cars protected when it's uh, bad storms. So. Maybe that'll be something he can offer up to the police department. So that's the uh, section at the front gate. When you get to the main building, lighting is lighting. He wants to put, uh, there is a street light type light on the building now. Uh, he wants to add on three corners of the building um, motion lights that would be aimed down, but for security purposes, because he's going to have quite a bit of inventory in this building. Uh, going down again, that shed, he wants to create 22 uh, storage facilities. Uh, just simple stuff, looking for, you know, maybe landscapers, that kind of stuff, not having uh, a whole lot of, not really advertising out to personnel people, to personal people but whatever he can, but they're going to just be the individual. If you, anybody ever saw that, if he puts garage doors on each section, that would create 22 storage facilities there. Um, they Currently, it's 20, there are 22, that we'll call them carports. They're all individually divided, yeah, so the it's van. all existing right now. Yes. They, the partitioning walls are probably roughed in 50%, so he's looking at devising those up but just enclosing them with the front door roll-up door and, and, no, and no rear access or anything I know the 
of butters were concerned of somebody being inside and going out, but that right now the building is solid on the back wall and it's going to stay that way. Um, he also put in possibly uh, putting up a privacy fence along that back side because we have people going on the property that way in both directions. Um, there's also, they made a note there that they were going to move the dumpster from where it is to like to the back side of the building. I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but it's on there. And then down where it says, on the right hand side where it says snow, snow removal, uh, he talked about parking, his, parking trucks there, that if he had to park his trucks there. Okay. So, well, snow storage is a, it's a requirement when, you, when, when someone does a site plan, they have to show where they're going to put snow. Okay. And if you're taking that away, I, well, don't, I don't see where you create okay. another spot for it. Uh, well, the property is huge, uh, and the trucks, he only had, right now he only has four trucks, so I think there'd be plenty of room for snow. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to make a statement now just, just, just to get it out there. Um, the board had a, quite a discussion uh, when we, uh, when Glenn proposed that this application come into us, and uh, the question was, was it going to need a fully engineered site plan, or were we going to be able to accept uh, a marked up plan on on the existing uh, approval? And um, things like things like you know the lighting would be in significant detail. You'd be providing cut sheets of the fixtures uh, and all of that. Uh, obviously the snow storage would be reviewed. Um, all of the elements of the plan, the town engineer would review it. So the board voted, it was not a unanimous vote, but the board voted to allow you to do a marked up plan as opposed to a, a new site plan. But when I start seeing things like the snow storage being eliminated and no place for it designated again, you're going to be adding lighting, and there's no 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 discussion or details about what that lighting is going to be. It's so all all downward facing motion sensor lights. So so right now it's time. And this is and this is just verbal from you, but a, a, a site plan would have included all of that detail. I'm just saying that it's an issue for me. But uh, so, so I right think, now I think most of the board is comfortable with just just the verbal. So, Mr. Francis, do you have anything else that you wanted to um, discuss before I open it to the board for questions? So, I think I think if Matt were here, he'd talk about the trucks and that snow storage area. So, Matt intends on keeping about a half a dozen of those storage units for his own personal use. So, he can rectify that issue right now, removing the trucks and that parking that we're seeing on here, and he continue to use that area for snow removal or snow storage. The the existing lighting on the warehouse, it's, you know, it was approved back when this plan was approved, downward facing wall packs, diffusers on them would stay the same. However, the, snow, the, uh, the proposed storage units utilizing the same wall packs just on a timer or on a motion, okay? Uh, on the lighting, I, I can't remember when exactly this original proposal was approved, but... Um, 2002. Do we know when the lighting ordinance was? Lighting ordinance dated March of 2002. So that would have to be changed to reflect the current amendment, right? Right, because that's that's obviously the original plans. No, yeah, I just want to make sure that any <coughs> any new lighting would have to comply with sure. the, uh, the current ordinance. First, or do you want to go to public comment first? Partners. Department. Department comment first. Uh, let me let me do department comment, uh, and then and then we'll go to public comment. And uh, Dennis, I know that you, you didn't review this, but if you have comments, we can certainly uh, okay. certainly want to take them and blend you as well. So, health department has no comment. Uh, highway department 
four comments here. One, where is the replacement snow storage area? <laughs> okay, well, I think we've talked about that one. Uh, how many employees? I think you did verbally talk about He that. has, he, right at present, he has three. Uh, if, if you had thoughts, or if he had thoughts of more employees, you'd probably want to be talking about that as part of the approval. Um, because if, if, you, if you get approval for three employees now, and then in six months you get five, you're gonna have to come back, or he's gonna have to come back for an amended site plan. Because it's, the site plan is tied to a specific number of employees, a specific operating hours, Etc. 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 Okay. Just so. And I believe when he came before the ZBA, completely different number, but I don't know off the top of my head what it was. But. Well, he's he's looking to have a, uh, like a secretary clerk in the facility, so that would be one. And then if he, as as business would expand, and if you could hire some employees, he'd probably be at, he'd add two technicians, so maybe call it six. So, so right now there wouldn't be a day-to-day -day employee on site. They yes. would just be picking up a vehicle or materials. It still it still counts as employees. Okay. Yeah. The Hamlet Barber has ever taken numbers of employees. We always do. I was just looking at those plans. Yeah. It's one. Yeah. It's, it's it's on the list of, of things. Is it? Yeah. Sure it is. Yeah. 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 It's generally used yeah. for calculating parking. I know you do it for parking and for septic. And for septic. Or is putting it on the plan. The, uh, you know, you typically do it and again, or... their on-site potential of one employee being on-site during the working hours, because as to explain this business more, the, the employees are going to show up in the morning, get their trucks, load the doors on, leave, do their work, and come back at the end of the day. There's, there's nothing, nothing that goes on, there's nothing planned to go on in this building that the doors, you know, picking up the doors. We don't make doors. Yeah. We don't do any. We don't it's manufacture. For distribution or yeah. manufacturing. Yeah, it's just sales and service. Okay, so that was the second comment was how many employees. The third one, this is from Highway Department. Uh, how many company vehicles is a question. Uh, and the fourth item, are there enough parking spaces? And again, because there aren't clearly delineated parking spaces, by looking at the plan, I would have no idea uh, if there are. Yeah, there are, there are plenty parking of parking spaces. There are. There are. Yeah. 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 Employee visit a parking lot. Yeah. Clearly see. Yeah. I guess what I was looking at is where the snow storage was going away. I didn't no, see no. designated spots. Yeah. Right when you drive. Oh. Okay. Over. The, yep. Coming in on the roadway. And then right in front of you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I guess the bus company must have had so, way more than we have. The building department has two comments. And they're both posed as questions. One, shouldn't the site plan have the applicant's name and address in the title block with current date? Question. And number two, shouldn't the changes to the plan and the handwritten notes be identified as belonging to the new applicant? Question mark, not George Horn. Okay, so that's from the building department. And I already read health department, which had no questions. Uh, Glenn or Dennis, do you want to weigh in before I go to the public? Sure. Um, my comments are as follows. This is uh, the first public hearing to allow the establishment of an overhead garage door business as well as self-storage at the site. The board should take a vote to consider invocation of jurisdiction. The applicant received ZBA approval for these uses in November 2021. The planning board allowed the applicant to mark up the existing recorded plan to show the proposed activity on site. There will be new operating hours as indicated on the plan. No new buildings are proposed. The footprint of all existing structures remain unchanged. New security lights are proposed and must conform to the town's dark sky ordinance. A new automatic gate is proposed as our overhead doors being added to the lean-to for the new self-storage use. Two new, dump, oh, excuse me, two new dumpsters are proposed as is a new privacy fence. 
the proposed use seems to be a reduction in the intensity of the on-site activity. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dennis, do you have? Um, I, I didn't write any comments because um, this is a site plan that I did, uh, my company did, uh, along with uh, Frank DeCesa, who's now deceased as the land surveyor. Um, so I was a little bit surprised when I got a copy of the plan because I was not notified, uh, at least by courtesy, of using my site plan, my stamp, in the plan that I proposed, that I did uh, put together. So I was a little bit surprised uh, of using that. And, and I know that the board has done something like this in the past uh, with a, a plan that was uh, approved um, with some minor changes. But when I take a look at what's what, what they're proposing here, it just seems like it's a lot more. Uh, a couple of things is the abutters are not current. Uh, any changes on the site, even minor, should be shown. Uh, the drainage, who knows what changes that have been in the past. So those are all the things that kind of, I was thinking about when I first looked at the plan, saying this is not accurate, and, it, and, and I'm surprised that the board would accept this as a plan um, that, and, and whether I update this or somebody else updates it um, and puts their stamp on it, then that's fine too. Um, uh, I noted the, the snow storage and the lighting also, and, and, and it said proposed uh, storage build, vehicle storage building, and, and it also the note says at the time field measurements were taken, there was no visible evidence of off-site water supply or septic systems within 200 feet. Perhaps that's changed. So I think that's what my comments would be if I wrote them out. But uh, I guess that's about the minimum that I want to say tonight. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Um, let's open for public comment now. And I'm assuming that someone sitting there probably wants to say something. <laughs> Uh, and you can either pick a representative, or you can all speak, or some of you can speak, or yeah. ask. All right, so uh, I need you to come, though, to the table so that the microphones can... They could sit here. Or, or there. Right here. You can sit right here. No, right at the table here, sir. You can sit right here. I can tell you what, gentlemen, could you just, at least one of you maybe move back and have uh, this gentleman sit at the table? Thank you very much. I'll stand, that way I can speak better. Does everybody hear me? Well, it's the microphone. That yeah, it's right there. Right. Uh, Garrison Todd, it, it says Bouchard on the uh, tax map, but that was a former owner. So that's the piece of property that we have, the 17 Main Street. Uh, Mr. Quintel, I take it, that's this gentleman here. As he so aptly pointed out, this, the plan's kind of a shambles with a bunch of notes on it. It doesn't really give us a clear indication, especially of a civil site plan dealing with uh, stormwater runoff. And it's going to be vehicles. I mean, obviously, there's a proposed storage shed. looks bigger than the ones there. I know because I've walked the property, so it, the proposal is a lot bigger than the structure that's there currently. Uh, oh, hold it. I don't understand that. I think it's. Oh, oh, hold your conversation, please. Our technology I've only got. Is I've, only got I've only got. I've only got. Two hands. No problem. Oh, okay, go ahead. Glenn, you had a or Peter question. Who's Glenn? Glenn. I, I, I was just. I, I, I'm sorry, I'll hold my comments until you finish. According to the plan we were given, it says it's proposed. It appears bigger than what is there. What is proposed? The storage shed with the proposed uh, slabs in there. Proposed 20 years ago. The leak basically is saying that what's on the plan is different than what's there, which right. could be. It, no one's confirmed the accuracy of the plan. 
again, this is, this is troubling for the abutters that we see this plan and we don't feel it accurately, as Mr. Quintel pointed out, it doesn't accurately represent what is there. And there's concerns from us, especially because we don't see any kind of a civil site plan dealing with stormwater runoff or any of the site runoff water, which if there's gonna be vehicles, which could have contained possibly oils and gasoline, which has to be contained by the site. I believe that's a DES rate. So that is that is a concern of ours. We're not against them having a business there. We're just concerned about storage, vehicles, what's going to be there. Um, I'm sure some of the other butters have questions about other aspects of that. But again, I just wanted to bring the attention that we agree with Mr. Quintel. This doesn't look good when you bring, a, bring that and it doesn't answer a lot of questions. So, I, thank you. Thank you very much. Who's next? You need to speak. Sorry. <laughs> the last meeting I was here at the uh, variant meeting, we couldn't hear anything. Can you hear me? Now I can. Okay. Um, and you said it was Elaine Todd? Elaine Todd, yeah, 17 Main Street. 17 Main Street. It's under Bouchard. Yes, got it. Okay. <laughs> I've lived there for over 50 years. I've seen a lot of changes, and I'm not opposed to what he wants to do. But because it is behind my property, I do have concerns. Um, one of the concerns I have is about the time change that the business is going to be running. Uh, we always get a lot of uh, traffic there with the police station and the town shed. And you know, we really don't want to add a lot more to it. Um, the time that he wants to make it, I believe it's 7 a.m. to 8 p.m.? 6.30 a.m. Okay. I couldn't hear, so I wasn't sure. Um, I know that changes what was there before and what was allowed before, so I'd like you to take that into consideration. Yeah, what was allowed before by the, the, the currently approved plan is 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right. right. The proposed expansion is to 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Exactly which makes it earlier and later. Um, the other thing is, something was said about um, wells and, and that kind of thing. We did put an artesian well in a couple of years ago in the back part of our property. So I don't know how much distance that is from what he's proposing, but I would like to have it checked into uh, before you know anything further goes. And that's about all I had to say. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Susan Gervasi, 15 Main Street. Um, my biggest concern is the amount of traffic that will be um, on, the, on Main Street. And I don't know if it's you guys I need to speak to or the state of New Hampshire, but we need a traffic light at that intersection. And when we came for the meeting with the other board, um, the owners were here for, and they uh, concurred, they agreed, they thought that we should have a traffic light there rather than just the flashing light we have now. That intersection is very dangerous. So, like I said, I wanted to bring that up because I don't know if that's something that has to be addressed in the state of New Hampshire or if that's something that you guys can address. I believe that's a state highway because that's, that's Route 111. 125, well, 111, yeah. 111, 111. yeah. Um, and uh, although one part of the intersection is a town road, it's where Main Street comes in. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Main Street at both sides, but yep. probably Chief Briggs can address that issue. You want to go, just call the police department during the day, and he'd answer that question for you. Okay. Who to get a hold of? Okay, so well, he's right across the street, so yeah. that's easy. There you go. <laughs> All right, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Your comments were covered already? Okay, thank you very much. All right, so with that, I'll close the public. Closing public comment. Okay. All right. All right. Now, cool. I guess I'll give a couple of things. Sure. Um, just by looking at this plan, I've, I've seen these bills at 125. I've never measured those bills at 125. The one on the right, to me, 
doesn't walk 240 feet long. But anyways, the end of that. Um, I don't see, I don't see, personally, I think uh, maybe, you know, this, this is a record of public acceptance. So that's probably where they got this copy from. Got it public from the record. Re registry of deeds. They go public record. But public. anyways, so they may want to change the, uh, maybe get a different plan for us with all the, uh, the improvements they're going to do. And using that existing building, which obviously they work on cars, now they used to be storing garage doors in it. I don't have an issue, I, I, would first, I wouldn't have an issue with that, but by looking at this plan, I think this may be one of the classic sidewalks, you know, see what's going on down there, and actually look, look, at, look, look what they have down there laid out. Not to trust this, because we don't know what this is. Well, and, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Peter. In fact, I'm, 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 I'm probably more in agreement with you than yeah. anything, because um, I think I was probably the one, if not one of, one of two, or one of the only one who felt that using the existing plan was probably not the best way to go. Right. Give you some kind of guide. In any case, um, the board did vote uh, to allow it to come in this way. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that it could take a different direction based on what we've seen and based on the discussion here tonight, but um, but the board did vote uh, to allow this as the submit. So. And if I can just address that directly, I'm, I was perhaps the strongest advocate of that and remain an advocate of that. There are no changes proposed to the paved areas on site. There's no changes to the structures on site. There's no changes to the, the footprints on site. Um, so using a record plan and doing an affidavit or facts of findings that we recorded the registry, not an unusual practice. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to discount anyone's comments. I didn't believe for a second that this did not represent what's out there because I have inspected this site on a couple of occasions over the last 25 years. Um, I just wanted to go on record as saying that because it seems like that's a point of contention. Uh, could be. <laughs> and, and, and I would say, you know, it's, yeah, I don't think there was any intention of the applicant, but if people are saying this isn't 240 feet long, mm -hmm. I don't think their intention with tonight was, ha ha, well now you've reapproved this 240 feet, so if it was only 220, we're going to add 20 feet onto it. Uh, I'm a, they're probably assuming that because this was recorded in an approved plan that the town had them follow the approved site plan when they constructed it. Um, but it should now say existing one. instead of proposed. Right, yeah. that was my next you know, comment. There are a number of things that have to be changed because they're 20 years old. Um, not at least these budgets, but I mean, most of the time we let people out of a plan because of expense. You know, that it's a major expense to have it, but I don't feel that this would be a major expense if they went to the original person because all the groundwork's done. So it would just take some editing and you know, it, it would not be a major issue. I think they've come up with a few more things on here than we were expecting. What I understood from the last conversation, and correct me if this is inaccurate, was that part of the, the concern, part of the rationale was that this is a reduction in volume of traffic, in volume of business, and an improvement in the, the physical sort of aesthetics of the site. Um, without any structural changes. Yeah. And I don't know that what's proposed right now is any different. Again, yeah. you know, I think verifying the, the size of the building probably makes sense, but I don't know that that warrants a whole new site plan. I mean, I'm still comfortable with a, a marked up site plan. And, you know, there's obviously, yes, they can't be having, this is somebody else, they have to say, hey, you know, we're submitting this, this is our name. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's... It's one of those things if somebody came in and said, hey, I want to operate Safeway bus again, exactly the way it was with no changes, they can bring all the buses in there, park them all those vehicles all over the place, and continue as business was previously without any updated changes. So to force them to do a completely re-engineered site plan with stormwater management, but yeah, I think there's still more work that needs to get done to clearly delineate that, hey, this is what is existing, not what's proposed 
fix some administrative stuff, but and like I said, I don't think their intention was to steal anyone's work. I think you know a, a business person who doesn't deal in civil engineering and drawing up plans all the time is thinking, hey, here's the recorded plan. They said I can mark this up, and I don't think anyone's intention was to make it a misrepresentation of somebody else's work. So, uh, but I am still comfortable in going forth with the marked up site plan instead of a full site uh, new survey site. And as Peter pointed out, we have the opportunity to do a uh, site walk because um, I really don't remember this, but when the building was put up, I mean, my understanding is more trees are cut down in front between 125 of the building than, than what had been planned, and uh, that became an issue. I wasn't on the board then, so I wasn't aware of it, but the uh, um, question is whether we'll have to reestablish a buffer or anything like that. Just I was building this back when this okay, was good. originally done. Well, I, I think why are we going to force them to plant trees of stuff that wasn't enforced on the previous, well, previous, yeah, previous that, owner? That was the <laughs> issue, is when it was sold in construction, it was enforced. Yeah. When it changed hands, it was not enforced. Hmm. Um, you know, a lot of the better comments come with the commercial property, you know, traffic. Hours of operation. I mean, I think there's going to, I think there's going to be less traffic. Well, I'm trying to say I can't do it. I can't do hours of operation with this. I think there's going to be. We also, we also got that really ugly trailer moved from your backyard too. Yeah. Oh, I just have a few things. I also don't have an issue with using the plan and marking it up. I think that there's a lot of things in here that they did not mark up. They do need to be marked up. You know, the owner, the deed. You know, the current deed. Um, um, the abutters. The abutters, for sure. You know, those kinds of things that they weren't thinking of. They were just thinking when they did this of their business and what they were doing with their business and not what was actually now in place with the plan because then this isn't their business. They don't do plans, so they wouldn't think of those things. Um, I do have other things. I think. Um, we didn't get did we get we didn't get comments from the fire department, which surprised me because usually the fire department um, has a concern about access through the gate. Well, if we put in so a, if something. we put in an automatic gate right now, it's just a manual gate, which right. uh, it takes three people to move because it hasn't been used in an age. Uh, we put in an automatic gate; they'd be supplied with the code, so Correct. they'd have the. But code. I'm just letting you know that they're going to want yeah. access to oh, this, so sure. certainly that's yeah. something. Uh, what, what was the material of the privacy fence? Um, again, I'm not really sure. Probably, probably a vinyl or a, yeah, a wood. But that's something that I think should be indicated, the kind of fence it's going to be. Again, the things that were proposed that are now in place, is the paved apron there or not there? Yes. I, I've not oh. been to the site before, so I don't know. So those things where it was proposed, the proposed needs to be removed. Um, I do think there's a huge issue with removing the snow storage. Yeah. Because if you remove the snow storage, then you're going to go back to fully engineered plants and you're going to spend thousands and thousands okay, of so dollars we'll just, getting it done. We can just eliminate So you absolutely need to um, repair the that. Park. And then definitely um, the pictures of the lighting fixtures are going to be vital because the lighting ordinance has changed from 2002 and changed again in 2010. So you need they need to be current and up to that. Um, but it's just basically updating this a little bit more and correcting the, in, the, cor um, the incorrect items on there so we know what is there. I do think a, side plan, a sidewalk is probably something we should do, just so we know. Who would we see about getting, doing that updated? Hmm? Who would we see to get one of these updated? Because like I said, we just got this from the <laughs> Registry of Deeds. This person that yes, did it. <laughs> okay. So, so my question is, um, and, and, and I don't object to somebody using my plan, but I would just like to have a courtesy of yeah. a call saying, gosh, Dennis, we have, we're buying this property and we'd like to use your site plan and the planning department says it's okay to use that. I would just like to have, you know, at least a courtesy call. That being said, um, my question to the board is that if uh, I come up with, if I was asked to update this plan for the butters and some things that I think the board needs, does that have to be recorded? Typically, an updated plan is recorded. 
And so to get a survey to stamp on and do everything that's recorded through the survey, uh, part of it, uh, that's an added expense that I would like to know if the board is going to require that or not. Well, at the, at the time that the board discussed this and made the decision that an engineer plan was not required, um, unless they were to change their minds, then the answer would be, would be uh, no at this point. So it would be done with an affidavit that, that recorded. An affidavit would be recorded, but, it would, but it not would reference this plan. Yes, right. like an updated site plan would reference this, but would that updated site plan have to be recorded? And if it did, I would need to know that if I was asked to update the plan. Well, based on the board's decision earlier, uh, the answer is no. Okay, well that's that's good. I just need to know that so that it would be uh, certainly a lot less of an expense to right. the applicants if. I was involved in that. So if the applicant hasn't gotten the, the, uh, the concept of this, uh, Dennis, as a civil engineer, is the one who drafted the original plan. Oh, that's his, like, yeah. that's <laughs> his stamp. The phone number hasn't changed in 20 it years. Hasn't, hasn't changed. <laughs> so if, 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 if you were wanting to talk to someone who could perhaps assist in updating the plan, uh, I think you know who to contact. Yeah. <laughs> and, and back to the fence again. Not only are we going to want to know, the material of the fence, but also the height of the fence, so we know if that's going to better protect the abutters than what's there now. Well, the actual, yes, okay. Yeah, just that kind of information. Yeah, and I think even just a, a handwritten note on your on your lighting, even if you were to put on there, or if you talk to Dennis, you know, it's going to say it must comply with all dark sky lighting or the town's light, current lighting ordinance as opposed to anything that's grandfathered. So you're almost there. Yeah. And I think um, something we should address, and that something that came up at the ZBA, which was um, some of the others had a comment about the self storage units. We've seen a lot of them going up and down 125 recently. Uh, and obviously, this is something that's a little bit smaller and um, not quite as fancy as it were. Correct. But the concern was that we have that automatic gate that people will come and go at all hours of the night. Uh, our suggestion, our being the CDA suggestion at the time was to develop uh, operating hours, and it may be that that 6.30 to 8 would be any well, things well, going those, on. Those are the proposed hours. Right. Yeah. So that would be the hours. And we could yeah. limit the times that those motorized gates are utilized too. Yeah. So yeah. Right. that's but why we the gates are programmed. Correct. So 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 that, that was the question that came up, and, and I know with the exception of emergency response. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, they'll have the code to open up access, right. yeah. So, so I think that was, that was a key concern that, that uh, um, some of these places down here. That those, I, I know when I ran into the storage facility, I could go any time, I just punch the code in and go back there. I think I'm right here about the morning, but, um, but I think that was going to affect the so, immediate runners. One thing I think we just, we, I think we need to decide whether or not we're going to invoke jurisdiction. Oh, right. Yeah. Wait, what? Invoke jurisdiction. Yes. Is, is this claim legal? Well, that's why we need okay. to discuss this first. Yeah. Well, and so I think unless anyone's going to try and remotion a vote to require an engineered plan, correct me if I'm wrong, then I think we have enough to invoke jurisdiction. My advice would have been to invoke jurisdiction. <laughs> okay. All right, motion by Chris, second by Lynn, uh, to invoke jurisdiction, and that's merely the act of accepting the plan as a complete enough to consider it. Uh, it also starts the statutory 65-day clock that the town has to uh, uh, deliberate and come to a decision on this. Make a motion we continue this to the next meeting. Ooh, so wait, 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 so that's unanimous. Okay, so we've accepted the plan to, to, to consider further. I think before we do this, we should ask if we've got enough information. 
what before we move to, to continue, uh, I think we should make sure that client knows what he needs, what we feel he needs to do to, to, to do to this to make it complete. So, based on the discussion that we've had here, uh, do you feel you have enough information to proceed with an update of this, whether you work with Dennis or whether you do something else? Yeah, I think that would be this. We can work with with uh, Mr. Quintel. Well, that's 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 up to you guys. I'm yes. I'm, oh, I, to get a new to get this updated the way it's supposed to be. Because because one of the board members is ready to make a motion to continue this hearing to another to a future meeting, at which point you'd have the chance to bring an updated plan. Give you a list. Of, we'll give you a list. Uh, probably in writing. Okay. That will tell you what we need on this plan. Okay. Hence your name. Right. Not the other name. Yes. Things like that. Yes. <coughs> All this clerical stuff. Okay. You don't want to get rid of the snow. Yes. We're gonna have, we're gonna have uh, requirements that you need to have fulfilled before the next meeting. Yeah. But you'll have that list. Okay. So, okay. So Lynn, before so, you quick question. So so Matt purchased this building already. Yep. Is he able to operate out of the warehouse with the current hours? Well it's a different use though. No. It's a different use. Well, technically, yeah. But, I mean, unless someone else feels differently, or the board feels differently, the answer is really no. You can't. So he couldn't even store anything or do anything there. Peter, I mean, I'm just trying to think of other other situations that we've had where business is going to go in similar as far as this is a business and they just store and stuff. Person not working. So it's simpler, I, I believe, in my thought, this is probably going to be going forward. We just need some clerical stuff taken care of. If he's purchased and he's bought this place, I don't see whether there's a reason why he can't do it or doing it. He's just using it for storage. It would be similar to uh, alternative sales. We can't get permission to store stuff. Correct. Because they couldn't get his fuzzy to finish it. The, the issue would be then if you start Bring trucks in and out to take the Oh, we can specify. I mean, we can clarify that to him. Storage only. He needs to move from his other location. Yeah, yeah. his question was, you know, I got the uses approved by the planning board. If they don't, you know, things go, if they want to table this conversation tonight, why am I not able to use my property to park my vehicles inside this non, you know, impervious pavement? Nothing's going to be, you know, to go back to a couple of points. Nothing's going to be, you know, going in, seeping into the ground. Why can't I use this? this warehouse of mine. So I just want to be able to relay that back to him. Yeah, I mean, I would just say they, they obviously can't do any of the proposed changes yeah. that they have. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a building. They're going to just be using the interior of the building. So the new they can't put in the automatic gate. They can't right. put in the fence. You can't right. wall off right. anything. No change. No change. Yeah, no, 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 so until this is all met. Yeah. And for the record, I'm opposed to that because I think that it's a, it's a slippery slope. It's a really creepy thing, creeping thing, <laughs> and uh, it could become a selectman's enforcement issue uh, big time. But obviously the board, the majority of the board feels comfortable with it. And, and I understand that concern too, but I was kind of looking at it from a different point. If they just came to us and said, hey, we're going to start by, we're looking to just start using this property, same hour, same area, I think we're just going to storage in the building. They started doing that, and then they came with an amended site plan. They'd still be doing, it'd still be following that same pattern, yep. and, and that's kind of what I was thinking. And now there's four actually. trucks there instead of yeah. twenty buses. Plus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So we need a date for a contingency. So you've got that. Well, before yeah, you do that, well, no, no, no. Is there going to be a site? Well, that's the question. That's that's my next point. Thank is you. that we don't want to continue this until we decide on the site. Thank you. <laughs> Not to add one more question to that, do we need to vote on the use? No, it's, already been no. No, it's that's, just that's what been approved. So many right? board already approved that. There was a variance granted, a use variance. There was. What's the date? That to both, to both uses. uses. And, that, and that ought to be noted on the plan, that should be another okay. thing. I'm, I'd say I'm looking at this completely different from you. I'm looking at this as an affidavit attached to this plan, which would include all that information. 
Okay. Why would the app the affidavit All right, be okay. with the right. new hours of us long as it's mm -hmm. um, So it's 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 the, the, the goal isn't a new plan, but in fact an affidavit adapt attached to this plan. Understood. The continuance would be to the 15th of February, so the sidewalk has to be before that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, the 29th is uh, deliberative session, yeah, so, uh, so it can't be that Saturday. It'd have to be like this Saturday. <laughs> Either this one or the 5th of February. Sooner the better on the sidewalk because anything that comes up could be noted on the plans. Right. Yeah, we really want it earlier. <coughs> oh, <laughs> Are the owners of the property will the owners of the property be back by Saturday? I'm, I'm sorry. Will the owners of the property which should return by Saturday? Yes. Saturday, so it's Monday. This Saturday. Yeah. Sooner the better, so it yeah. gives them a chance to right. put anything that we say on the plans. What time? Eight thirty. About nine. It's nine. gonna be bitter cold, so it's gonna be bitter cold at eight and bitter cold at noon. So it doesn't make any difference. <coughs> okay. How about nine a.m. Nine a.m. on the twenty second. Twenty second. We have about 10 degrees. Uh, is that enough time to notice? This is the oh, notice. This is the notice. We'll go back to nine. We have about 10 degrees. <laughs> 9, 9 a.m. Yeah. But we will post it. We will post yeah, it. You will be posted. And the gate's open. You just need a few more seconds. <laughs> so, I just want to make sure that the, that the abutters are aware of what's going on here. The board is discussing the scheduling of a site walk, which, uh, assuming that they vote to do it, uh, is considered a public meeting. It's not a public hearing. It's a public meeting, so it's not a, it's not for the purposes of taking testimony from abutters. But abutters are welcome to, uh, to participate and join in on the site walk. Okay. And the date? Oh, we're 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 we're. we're Currently considering, oh. currently considering this Saturday, which is the 22nd at 9 in the morning. So is there a motion to that effect? I'll, I'll move that we have a site walk uh, at the subject property at 9 o'clock Saturday morning. The and the applicant can be there, yes? yes. Okay. Yeah. Order. Second. A motion by Peter Coffin, second by Lynn, to hold a site walk at this property on 9 Main Street uh, at 9 a.m. January 22nd, which is this coming Saturday. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So that's unanimous. So that's a set date now. Uh, it will be posted. It will show up in our normal posting places and the website, I believe. I believe it will get on the website as well, yeah. Probably not until Thursday, but yes. And if you know of other abutters uh, who weren't here tonight, but who might want to participate, if you could share that information with them, that would be helpful. Now then. So, well, the next question would be, can a plan be completed by, or if we, if we continue this to February 15th, which is our next hearing night, plans need to be in by February 15th. Fourth at noon. Oh, February third, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday. February third, February third at noon. So you need to. That only gives you a couple weeks to get them done. Well, now I have a question because Mr. Greenwood said something about keeping this plan and using an affidavit. Yes. Where are we? Am I changing this? But still, by that's an option. Store is the affidavit. With all the changes, is his option up there? I would agree with that. So I understood it as Dennis was going to mark up the. Somebody was going to mark. Somebody oh, was going to be marked up. Was yeah. going to mark up the existing plan and then attach right. an affidavit to spell out all of the changes. Correct. Is that? Be because.
because the board's not making you get a new certified site plan. Gotcha. So even if even if Dennis didn't update, it would still be referencing this plan with an affidavit. So where is that for us? Both yeah. things. The affidavit will be created by Glenn. Uh, that you would process. that you would that you, the applicant would sign off on, uh, and it would get recorded at the Registry of Deeds. The updated physical plan yeah. would. Uh, just be held here at the town hall on the property file and the planning board file. It wouldn't get recorded at the Registry of Deeds. But the two things, the affidavit which gets recorded and the updated plan, are tied to one another by reference. And they both, they, they, they would both constitute your, uh, your, new, your new plans. So what you need to find out is whether or not a plan can be completed by that deadline. A marked up marked version, up of, this. version of this can be completed by that deadline. Okay. So, not the one that's marked up now. Something different. Well, well it, it needs to be modified based on the discussion. Correct, uh, correct. Uh, correct it. So we get another one of those and correct it. We're good. Okay. The thing to do would be take the continuance to the fifteenth, and then if you can't make it, ask for a continuance. Well, I think that would. That <coughs> all we got to do is get another big one. In. We'll give it to you in writing. You can call the offices. Speak to Glenn. Yeah. He'll help you through it. motion we continue to February 15th with plans due to the planning board office by noon on February 3rd. Second. Okay, motion by Lynn, second by Richard to continue this hearing to February 15th at 6.30 or 6.45? Uh, 6.15, yeah, that's okay. Six weeks are going to be taken up February first. I don't know. I don't have the sheet to say if we have anything else booked at that on that date, but it doesn't matter because we don't get everything. Everything six thirty. Correct. We don't have to sit here and put our time. It's just that we have to continue it to a time and date certain, so that everybody knows, the public knows, you know, the board six, knows. Six forty-five, February fifteenth. So motion to continue to six forty-five, February fifteenth, with any new materials like update of this. Do no later than February 3rd at noon in the planning board office. Okay. And if you can't make that, you can always talk to Glenn about uh, drafting up a request for a continuance, and the board can then do that at the meeting on the 15th. All, right. All set? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that's unanimous. So for the public, this is your notice of that continued hearing. You won't receive another piece of certified mail. Oh, did, did we do certified mail on this? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> we, 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 we paid for it. Come on. Assuming anything. So, Glenn, it looks like you might be some confusion. So, our only question would be does the public have any question not about the plan, but about the process? The only question I have. No, it would still happen. There would well, no. The answer is no because the board can't take action until the meeting it takes place at the fifteenth. So at the fifteenth, we put it first on the agenda, and we would <coughs> continue it to the next meeting at the time. Okay, so we would still come anyway. Okay. Well, yes, well, we you, could. You could call the office and okay, and ask if you wanted to, and I would be able to tell you if I've heard anything. Okay. All set then on process? Okay. All right. Thank you. You folks have any more questions before we let you go? Quick, I'm confused enough. <laughs> what's, no, what's, we're, okay. we're, what's the turnaround time to get those conditions that we just discussed? Is that typically something we'll receive in a couple of days or? I can, I can, I can write that up for you on Thursday. Terrific. Can I send it to the Aloha? Perfect. Or, uh, is it Allison or? Yeah, either both of them. That's yeah. right. Allison, I'm actually I've been using Allison's email most frequently, so I'll, I'll send it to her. Thank you. All right, thanks, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, uh, just a couple, a couple of uh, more things. We've got to go back to our board business, and let's see. 
the minutes of December 14th. Yeah. That's the one we've just got again. Yes, I'll uh, move that we accept the minutes as submitted. Second. Right, motion by Peter Coffin. Second by Robin. To accept the minutes of December 14 as written. Discussion? All in favor say aye. issue of Town and the City Magazine from the Municipal Association is out. It's uh, in the office here if anybody wants to look at it. It's also available online now, the website. You can go, you can go right online and, and read it now. So, um, And just two quick notes for, for folks. Um, you probably saw emails flying around about uh, Susan Ayer going to be taking a photo of the board. She's got some space I, I wrote up the annual report and there was some space on one of the, the second page and she asked if, if, uh, if we'd like to have a photo of the board and I said, it's okay with me. And so uh, she and Ellen have arranged it for uh, the start of our meeting on February 1st. So just FYI, you know, Susan wanted to make sure we all had our hair combed and you know. So, Thanks. So that's, <laughs> so, so that's the public service announcement on that. And the other public service announcement is that it's, uh, it's election time again. It goes along with town meeting, and each year there are two uh, planning board spots that come up for uh, election. Uh, the two incumbents on the spots this year are Chris and Peter. Um, and uh, just for the benefit of anybody out there, it's a three-year term, and if you're interested in, uh, in running for that spot or one of those spots, uh, you should get an application in down at the town clerk's office. Thursday, I believe. Starting Thursday, and it runs for like a two week point. Yeah, it's yeah, so it starts it's tomorrow, 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 I think. Tomorrow, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it's tomorrow? Yeah. That's wrong. Okay, you should know. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other business? There were two oh, letters, yes. two correspondence letters. There were? Yes. And they were, they're somewhere in front of me. Well, you're going to have to help me find them because oh, I didn't see them. They came, in the, came by email. What was the way? Do we have minutes from the fourth too? That's the number. We, 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 we do, but we would do them at the next meeting. They were sent out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I, uh, I believe everyone saw this one. Mm -hmm. Ellen sent this one around about um, Bolton's. She did that last week, I think. And this one just came in yesterday, so and you just have to read that section. Okay, so the first one, as Glenn said, this did come to us by email. It is the, uh, apparently there are new owners of the uh, property at 22 Main Street, which is formerly the uh, Bolton's uh, Lakeside. Lakeside. And let's see, there are new owners, Henry Olszewski and Nick DeRoche. And they said here, this is, uh, it doesn't have a date on it, but. Oh, I think it, yeah, I think they dropped it off the planning board office last Thursday, so what was that? that was okay. So it says, as requested, this letter is to explain the use of business at 22 Main Street. We have received a copy of the original approval and have reviewed it, and we intend to comply with it. The draft house, lakeside bar, and grill, formerly known as Bolton's Lake House. Initially, our hours of operation will be year-round as, as listed below. Uh, Monday and Tuesday closed, Wednesday 4 to 10, Thursday 4 to 11, well, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., 4 p.m. to 11 p.m., Friday 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., Saturday 11.30 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. We intend on having approximately 10 to 12 employees. It will be a mix of full-time and part-time staff. We intend on doing a very similar kitchen program as the previous restaurant. We will offer inside and outside dining as previously offered. Also, we would like to provide some musical, acoustic entertainment a few times a month. 
The general atmosphere at the Draft House Lakeside Bar and Grill will be a casual, upscale dining environment for the residents and their families of Kingston and the surrounding communities. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or concerns. We look forward to becoming part of uh, the community and serving as residents. Thank you, and it's signed by uh, Henry Olszewski and Nick LaRoche, and the phone numbers are, and emails are listed. Uh, also attached to the document uh, is a, an affidavit, which was done in 2013. And this was related to the stormwater management. Uh, well, actually, a couple of things. Uh, the planning board met with the applicant owner, Gary Hammond, on May 21, 2013, to consider an expedited site plan uh, review to address issues at the site prior to opening. Uh, the board voted to accept the proposal for an expedited site plan and discussed various issues regarding the parking lot, area for outdoor tables, lighting, etc. The proposal was approved with hours of operation Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. year-round. In addition, the agreement was reached, an agreement was reached that includes the installation of a dry well for stormwater management that will be installed and maintained per best management practices. This work is to be accomplished by September 30th, 2013. This agreement is predicated upon information detailed on the plan for the property recorded Rocky and County Registry of Deeds as Plan D-17224, recorded on November 5, 1987 at 2.13 p.m. And it's signed by the then Planning Board Chair, Richard Wilson, and the applicant, uh, Gary Hammond. And then there are a section of minutes from, looks like March 18 of 2014, when the following owner uh, had a conversation with the board, and that was uh, Mark Heights, and uh, let's see, asking to construct a patio, um, had received variance for setbacks, uh, lot coverage, and special exception for the shoreland. Mr. Wilson confirmed the board had received the paperwork from CBA. Mr. Height stated the site is currently approved uh, to operate from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days, and he's asking to expand those hours uh, to close at 11 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the remaining days the same, remaining the same. Mr. Greenwood stated the plan notes reflect the hours. <coughs> Is the plan notes? Uh, say anything about outside seating? How many? Quantity? I don't know. I believe that the site plan does. That's what I'm looking at. I don't see it. I think the only issue we, I can think of having is music. I would think we'd want to specify that it be indoors. Because I can remember the sessions we had here about outdoor music at that site yeah. and how it carried across Kingston Lake and people were all upset. Would they still be allowed access through the special event permit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So just do it for once again. So whatever whatever came to the place, I don't know, did we ever end up resolving that and be finalized or was it something that was currently authorized and never got fully addressed and they're saying they want to abide by exactly what was allowed? It was never authorized. Never authorized. That was that was that was the issue. Okay, I, I just don't know. I can't remember how it was officially resolved before. Yes. Like, I I think it was left in limbo. I think there was it, complaints made. There was complaints made. It was never authorized. And uh, I believe the, uh, Mr. Heights went to the town council to ask, and basically reported back here that uh, he felt it was part of his business. And uh, but and what official action did the town ever take? The town never took it. <laughs> but the only music that Mr. Heights, I mean, he did have some very quiet ambiance music just outside in the dining area that you really don't think it even hear he down by to, the lake. What's that? He was talking to yeah. about that he had to apply for. Yeah. 
So I think we should. I think we need to get back to him. And so let yeah, him we know. should clarify to them that they don't have because they may because they may be under the pressure. Oh yeah, I used to have outside. Right. I used to have, have that outside acoustical. So sessions. our response should be any outdoor. We could offer them the same thing. Could only be done through a special permit by the board of selectmen. Yep. Yeah. Or to we also go so far as to say that any outside use must comply with the town's noise ordinance. Well, well, that should well, be well, well, I think they're saying that, that, I mean, they say they fully intend to comply with the approved plan. Right. I just think it's worth noting that in case anything was conveyed to you that outdoor acoustical music sessions used to occur here, please note that that was not an approved, yeah. an approved use in the site plan, but it is an option available to, to you through special exemption permitting through the select plan. Or you could come back from the site plan. Yes, right. Right. Or, or you could do it yeah. in the site plan. You could come back for an amended site plan. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I just, because we know how this goes, we're like, well, I heard it used to happen, and mm -hmm. somebody has pictures of them out there. Yeah. And I'm right. I, will, I, will, <laughs> I will make that response to that. Okay, so um, if if that's the will of the board, then we ought to do a motion to that effect that, um, <coughs> that it doesn't need further review with the, with the proviso that they be notified of the um, of the limitation on outdoor entertainment. Okay. So moved. Motion by Lynn. Second. Second. I heard Rob. <laughs> by Robin. <laughs> Discussion? In favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That's unanimous. Oh, and uh, Ellen, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you when that last hearing ended. Well, well let's say it ended at uh, 8.40. Yeah, I have 8.42. Oh! Oh! 8.42. All right. So, Glenn, you'll take care of that well, notification. So the, the last one here came in today. Well, actually, I think yesterday. It uh, looks like it has a date stamp of January 17, addressed to Glenn Greenwood and Ellen. Uh, hoping, uh, hoping you both are well. Happy holidays. Uh, I'm in the process of signing a lease at. I'm in the process of signing a lease at 3 Newton Junction Road. <coughs> I'm sorry. 3 Newton Junction, Kingston, for yoga. 3 Newton Junction, Kingston. I'm assuming that's 3 Newton, Newton Junction, Junction Road, Road in yes. Kingston. Yes. Uh, for, for yoga, wellness, and retail space. This could actually be happening. Exclamation. <laughs> ha ha. I'm sorry, but this is this is what it is. <laughs> no cafe for now, unfortunately. There will have to be future plans. I believe there's a planning board meeting tomorrow night. Here we are. Uh, I was hoping to see if it would be quote easy. Oh, oh, <laughs> you don't it. So nothing's easy. easy. No, there's the answer. <laughs> This has to pass with the town before I sign. And it's signed Joy, it's Joy Quest LLC is the business, doing business as the Iron Cactus. Use of the property is yoga, wellness, and retail, which includes cards, candles, blankets, yoga cloths, and jewelry. Number of employees, four. Uh, number of customers or clients at one time, 20. Hmm. There are enough parking spaces with handicap. It doesn't say what they are, but it says there's enough. Hours are Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., Sunday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. There will be no hazardous materials on site. I will comply with the site plan, no changes. 
Is there a site plan for this already? There, there is. is. It would just be real kept secret. This is family pools. You know, we're kind of oh, it's, it's, it's not a yoga place. No, no, no. no. And that's, that's why she's proposing All right, this. okay. So let me just finish here and then the board can check. Okay. Um, let's see. I do know a business occupancy permit will be required. Signage, I will use the existing sign placement on the property. I will have a design with my business name and submit that once complete. Glenn, do you have anything to add? Uh, well, very little. This this is the this is the woman who originally was hoping to put this yoga facility down at uh, Reynolds. Can't yeah, Reynolds, Reynolds, Reynolds RV. Uh, and we, I think she did an expedited site plan or something, and we approved her to go in there. But boy, that just didn't work out. And so she's asking about this site, which is. Three Newton Junction Road, it's the site where Family Pools is, but I believe she intends to use the building that looks like a residence on the... So, I need to recuse myself because I represent the lessor. <laughs> but I will tell you, she, she plans to rent um, the unit where derailed uh, clothing, clothing store was. So Family Pools will continue? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, fam because Family Pools is in another building. Right, so if you're, yeah. yeah. She's gonna. She wants to go where derailed was. In the in the what's the what's in the, the house building. Yeah. First floor. Part of the first floor. Okay. So the question for us one is: is, is, is additional site plan review required for this use? Yeah. She's got probably separate. She's gonna have septic issues. Septic issues. Fire going from retail Bathroom. people in and out to 20 people clients there. I guess I don't know. Well, the, the, I guess I think you know what's on here. Dennis has knowledge on the septic. No, we just asked about the septic system. I, I, I know that we maximize the septic system for the size, and we just have to take a look at it for the number of people that they're proposing at one time to see if that would be uh, something that they would have to take a look at. But I wouldn't know until I look but part of a review, or, or if you want me to take a look at it and let you know, I can do that. Was the septic system installed yeah. when the <coughs> older house was taken down? So that was the apartment house? Yeah, yeah. Apartment house had the store. Well, yeah, that's the question. Is, 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 it, that's a question. Yeah, that's a question. 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 That's a the well kept secret in. No, it was a daycare center. Oh, but in Lauren. But I first, be, oh, but first before, it was, before it was first it was a nursing home sort of thing. And then it was a daycare center. And then it was a well kept secret. secret. And then they sold it to family pools. Yeah, and then but the left side of the house as you're looking from Newton Junction Road because you're looking south has always been residential and the upstairs uh, uh, above the well kept secret was residential and I believe it still is and with the, uh, the there's an apartment on the second floor there's an apartment in the back on the east side of the building right. I can take a look at the septic plan and work with Richard the health officer and if it's okay with him then I would think it would, I would think as far as the septic is concerned I would think it would be okay with the board if that's the only issue right and then there's the well, chain of use is the other thing I'm, I mean, I'm not sure it's the only issue I mean it's, a, it's an issue my experience of driving by, there's only two or three parking spaces that the family pool uses. The rest of the cars park out in the back of the building. And there's probably 20 spaces. Yeah, there's a new spaces. I think they counted 23, 24. Mm -hmm. There would be 20 customers or clients at one time. And if it's a yoga studio, presumably some of those come together. Maybe. I have very little experience with yoga other than in my family and they go together. <laughs> I, I can't give an answer on this tonight without some research, septic wise. So, so my other question would be that if they're going to do yoga and they have a class of 20 people, how long does the class last? Oh, no. 
So how many hours of 20 people could they have in the course of a day? 10 hours? Good luck. Yeah. Could have several 20 people? Could have several classes and then you've probably got overlap of parking and cars because people are going to come early. I'm, I'm looking at the septic. Well, what, well, so yeah. there could be four <coughs> people there in the course of a day then, right? Probably find out from the apple how many classes she's going to hold and what day of the week to get an idea of what the load is on the door. Right. And how many people attend each class? Or we look at the load and tell her how many she can have. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, really, I'd really rather first hear what her expectation is. Because she's been thinking about this for a long time. God bless us. So, it sounds like we here don't have enough information to decide if we're just going to let this go and continue with the current plan. We need more information. Well, specific to the septic, right? Because the use, the any of the uses that she's proposing would be fine in that space, wouldn't they? It's retail space currently. Like health and fitness. Yeah, it's, it's not the same Well, use. last conversation we talked about it being educational, right? And that was why it was allowed in the campers RV place. Because well, it was an approved use. Physical yeah. fitness. Is it not? Yeah. But that's also it's well, 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 right? the wellness aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just it's allowed. allowed. It's just, just to change the use. I mean, I just remember thinking from one community to another community. That's a stretch, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's why we have to have these reviews is to answer the questions to come up with the change in use because obviously the number of people in the board not a lot there is a lot different for retail class, but didn't say how many a day right correct yeah. <clears throat> so I will I'll, I'll get back in touch with her um, is it okay for me to tell her that she could get that information in advance of our February 1st meeting sure is that okay you, you may also she indicated she had future plans, and if those future plans involve some type of a uh, nutrition box or whether it's a food stuff like that, she may want to bring that to our attention. Because That's her goal. Well, the thing is, if that doesn't meet that property or the septic or anything else, she's never going to have it there. <laughs> so I would let her go in there now, knowing she can't continue what she wants to do there. Right. She, we should probably look at the goal she has. I will look. She definitely. The other place is going to have a cafe. Oh, I know. She could definitely change everything if she has a cafe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. The only other thing I wanted to mention to the board was, is it okay for us to have two discussions on February 1st? Right now, we don't have anything planned on February 1st. But we Dan right. would like to go over the... We've, new aquifer maps, yep. uh, and the economic development committee that has recently been started in Brentwood would like to talk with the planning board about potential cooperation. And so it would be um, a couple of members of that committee, one of which is, uh, one of them is Darren Wiggum, and uh, even the chair, vice chair of the committee. Darren doesn't live in Brentwood. No, no. He, they, they, oh, he's their advisor? He is their advisor, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it would be a general economic development discussion about possible ways that two towns could coordinate. Did you ever get in touch with the folks up at UNH? <coughs> Sorry. Did you ever get in touch with the folks up at UNH? I did. We, I, I asked them twice and we overscheduled both of those meetings so they didn't come. Yeah. And he's willing to come at any point. So, and that was for uh, talking about uh, impervious, impervious, surface. Oh. impervious pavement. Right. And, uh, actually, pervious pavement. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is the board okay if Glenn has those two discussions scheduled for our February meeting, February first? The would have the economic development people come and go, and then Dan, or, because that could go on if we. Like That's talking right. about the map, so. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Anybody have anything else? Richard, anything from the 
that office? Oh, we have more than likely hired an enforcement person. Oh, really? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> so, and you're happy? Uh, we'll wait to see. <laughs> well, that was quite a pause. <laughs> that was, that no, was good. really not you know, what I was hoping for. Was by far the best of any of them we interviewed through the whole process. I mean, all oh, the way back. Even better than the person you tried. Well, that's yeah. good. You got to feel good about that. He came with very high recommendations. Uh, currently, he's in Antigua or someplace, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back and then he's going to be gone again. But we decided that was kind of good too because it's going to give us a little stagger to catch up. So, well, that's good news for Chris. That's good news. Good news. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to second. Mark. All in favor say aye. aye. All right, we're adjourned at 9 10, 10 after 9 p.m. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Adam.